Holy shit. Good morning. This is Bill from Auto House of Naples on a muggy crap. You know what? I, okay, I always complain about how miserable it is in the mornings. The truth is, this morning it's not quite that bad. I don't know if it's a product of a lack of humidity or uh, what's going on, but it could be a lot worse. I'm not dripping yet. Uh, of course, I didn't have to photograph this morning, so this is just a video, so that could have something to do with it. Uh, but either way, we're goat free, although I'm prepared for them today, uh, both in terms of size arm and in terms of vehicle and uh, I have to wonder what else is hanging around here you know I was waiting yesterday to get a note from Marianne saying oh you know thank you for closing the gate but uh, the word is that the oscillates have escaped and they were attacking the neighbor zebras and I mean what kind of neighborhood is this where you have to worry about all these crazed wild animals coming at you it, it just doesn't seem very civilized to me but uh, you know what the hell do I know so anyway I'm just hanging tough I'm gonna keep eyes in the back of my head and make sure nothing there's a flock of birds coming in make sure nothing comes at me and uh, we'll keep going forward anyway about the vehicle so what we've got today is this Jeep this is a 2018 Jeep uh, I believe it's the JK version which was the third generation Wrangler uh, tracing its roots back to only 86 in terms of the Wrangler uh, before that going back all the way to World War II and before a little bit uh, was the uh, the Jeep CJ uh, which was owned and built by a variety of companies and the CJ is a fascinating story and a fascinating vehicle <coughs> genuinely it is uh, you know, the, uh, not widely known is that the Americans had noticed there was this little Austin used by the British in World War One and thereafter as sort of an infantry car that was light. Uh, I think they made it four-wheel drive. Uh, it was able to do all kinds of great reconnaissance missions, and the United States military, with its unlimited budget, noticed. So they... Uh, went to a bunch of different car companies, like a hundred of them, and said, come up with a vehicle for us. Uh, but here is what we need. It's this long list of stuff, and it, uh, you know, we need it like yesterday. So only three companies were able to respond. Uh, of those three companies, you had Ford, uh, you had Willys Overland, and you had Bantam. Uh, arguably, Bantam came up with the best product, but they just didn't have the ability to put it together. And even if they did, Ford was a monster at that time, who was going to put them out of business and ruin them. So uh, that said, it didn't go to Ford. It ended up going to Willys Overland, the uh, contract, uh, even though all three companies did end up building Jeeps for World War II. And the Jeep was an immediate immediate love affair thing with uh, all the soldiers who used it. They absolutely went nuts for it. Uh, there's some argument about where the name Jeep came from. Uh, there was a Popeye character called Eugene the Jeep who was you know, some kind of little tardy kid and you know who knows if that's it or uh, Ford made the GPW general purpose. Uh, maybe it came from a slur on that. Uh, there was also, you know, I guess the word Jeep was used in uh, the military for new recruits and new vehicles. So nobody really, really knows what the true origins of the word Jeep is. But it has become an absolutely famous name and uh, is synonymous with off-road vehicles. It's the same way Coca-Cola is. You say, oh, get me a Coke. You know, you might mean anything, but you say a Coke. Uh, in most of the world, you say, oh, I drive a Jeep. And uh, that could refer to, a, you know, some sort of an Austin Rover or uh, any number of off-road vehicles. It's just a generic name for an off-road vehicle. So Jeep really succeeded. In fact, Jeep was even noticed by Enzo Ferrari. Uh, who called it the only real American sports car. Uh, of course, he said that in, you know, 1954 or 5 when the Corvette came out, and it was meant to be a slight to the Corvette. Uh, but the Jeep people <laughs> absolutely loved it. And why, why, what a bastard Enzo was. He really was. Talk about a son of a bitch. Anyway, so the Jeep, uh, you know, gained uh, all kinds. It even won a Purple Heart in World War II for storming the beaches in... Um, in the uh, Pacific uh, Theater. Uh, one of them got the Purple Heart for doing two beach stormings with bullet holes and all that stuff. It got an order of retirement. Uh, now that's love, man. I mean, when the military gives a Jeep a Purple Heart, you know they love the damn things. Uh, but anyway, so after the war, people decided they still wanted them, so soldiers bought them, uh, almost the same way they had bought some of the British sports cars. Uh, they started to make military versions, CJ, civilian Jeep, 
cheap, uh, with the idea that construction workers and farmers would own them. And a legend was born, and it just went on and on and on and on, and they still make them today as true as they can. Obviously, it's not that easy. God, I have to wipe down. You know, these big, stupid tires kind of catch all the... I don't have my rags. I have to do this. God. Anyway, they catch all the water and fling it up. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, as much as they can, it's very tough to keep a Jeep in line with all of the modern safety standards, gas standards, fuel mileage, all that stupid stuff. Uh, you know, Jeep uh, Chrysler is fighting that constantly to be able to uh, keep this thing on the road. And they've done a pretty damn good job with that. And I'm going to be the first person to say I'm not a Jeep person. And uh, there are Jeep people. In the same way there's 9-11 people, there are Jeep people. And in fact, the Jeep purists may be even more terrible and horrible than the 9-11 guys, which is saying a lot. Uh, because uh, they demand that Jeep keep things going a certain way with the same ferocity and viciousness that the 9-11 guys do. In fact, the first gen Wrangler, which came out in 86, uh, by the way, the seven slot, this is a famous thing, the seven slots in the grill, uh, that came from Ford. That was a Ford thing, part of their design, but eh, anyway, I, I, I digress. Uh, also, the round headlamps, you know, that's been going on since the 40s, 30s even, and uh, you know, all of a sudden this first gen Wrangler that came, the YK or so, I don't remember what it was called, had square headlights and the entire Jeep population went batshit. Are you kidding me? Square headlights. Uh, so Jeep very quickly had to uh, reverse that. Uh, shades of the 911 and Boxster in 1997. But uh, anyway, there it is. So I've never really been a Jeep guy. You know, they're their own thing. They're their own type of people. They're obviously driven by lesbians. Okay, well, not, you know, that's not true. Lesbians prefer Toyota 4Runners, but they're driven by people who like American gladiators and know what to do with a bandana. And uh, that's just not one of the people that, that I am. I, I just, uh, you know, I get it, I respect it, uh, but it's not me. So, you know, if I had to choose a vehicle to drive, it's certainly not going to be a Jeep. And uh, there is, though, it turns out, one way to make me love a Jeep, and uh, it's happened to this one, and we'll get into that just momentarily. Uh, but uh, people take Jeeps and they customize them, they do stuff to them, as this one's had stuff done to it. Uh, there are little bits of competition, they have meetings, they have rallies, they go off-roading, they go on trails. Uh, it's a very, very serious business. Uh, off-roading is another thing which I think is friggin' insane, especially the mudding guys, you know? I don't get that at all. It's like, okay, well, let's go out into the wilderness deep, far away from any conceivable rescue, and then try to get our truck stuck in the mud. I mean, how the hell does that make sense under any, uh, you know, parameter of life at all? How does that make any sense at all? And yet that is what these people do. So uh, I think they're just a little bit touched in the head. And uh, I don't care how well they wear their bandanas or even if their little dog has a bandana on. If you're stuck in the mud 500 miles from civilization, uh, you're kind of screwed. There's just no other way of looking at it. Uh, I suppose the winch up front helps and you probably have other Jeeps around to help. But uh, it still seems counterproductive to me. I'd rather spend a nice evening at home with a pipe in the New York Review of Books. Uh, but anyway, people customize these things, as this one is, and in fact, I have a little cheat sheet here uh, about what this thing came with, because I'm never going to remember it, but here it is. So uh, it's got, um, well, we're going to get into the, the main stuff here. I'll go down to the third on the list. It's got painted poison spider differential cover plates. Uh, now, I made fun of that yesterday to Ryan, uh, the sales guy, and he looked at me very seriously and said, no, no, Poison Spider is a, uh, is a trail in the Moabi Desert. I'm like, okay, because, you know, I thought it was stupid. Why do you name things after things you don't want to have around? Here's something I don't want to have around. Poison Spiders. I really don't. I really don't have any desire to be anywhere near a poison spider any more than I do a goat uh, or uh, even birds or whatever else. So, uh, you know, that's the thing with the Jeep stuff is they, they celebrate these things that people don't like. Poison spiders. Uh, it's got uh, Mopar coilover spring lift with Fox shocks. It's got 18-inch moto metal wheels. Uh, Nitro Ridge Grappler 35-inch tires. Uh, poison Spider front fenders, uh, Poison Spider rear fenders, I guess that makes sense, and wheel well liners, that must be those meshy things in there. 
and uh, a worn 10,000 pound uh, Xeon 10-S winch with synthetic rope. Uh, I presume that means you can clip the winch into the side of a mountain and just pull yourself up it. Uh, a or B onboard air, I presume that's to inflate the tires when they go bad. Uh, more poison spider stuff, a spare tire delete with a lighted license plate mount. And I looked at this earlier. Look at that, so you've got webs of your poison spider waiting to leap out and attack you and poison you. Uh, and I guess that's the new thing in Jeeps now, is to not have the big spare tire at the back. When I first saw this Jeep, I thought, that's weird, uh, but apparently that's the new Jeep look. Uh, it also has a uh, poison spider license plate delete. I presume that's thing in the middle, which, uh, so you still have a license plate, so I don't know why they call it deleted. Uh, you've got wild boar grab bars. Those are oh shit handles that say wild boar on them. Uh, door sill guards, Kenwood speakers, and a bazooka sub. So we'll get into all that crap in a minute. Uh, but point being, so there it is. So it's lifted with big wheels and tires. That's the Jeep thing. It's got all sorts of weird little accents on it, like the wheels and diff cover and running boards. And, uh, and that's all great. And it's nothing that I would like because it's not for me. You see these things all over the place. I mean, you know, I get that there are some serious off-roaders in the Jeep world, but 90% of the people who make a Jeep that looks like that are going to they're going to encounter nothing more disturbing than a puddle in the Whole Foods parking lot. I mean, this is just, so many of these Jeeps are just for show only. They're not going to be running real rugged off-road stuff. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. And that's one of the reasons that I don't love them. Why do I love this one? Let's just get right into it. The first time I'm starting under the hood. So, like an old Jeep, <clears throat> you got these little fender releases. Uh, you've got, uh, you see those rubber things? That's if you fold the windshield down. Uh, that's something they stay true. You have to take out like 10 bolts, but you can fold the windshield down in these. But here it is. Why do I love this Jeep? When I saw this, I kind of freaked out. Let me see if I can get in here. There it is. <laughs> That's why I love this Jeep. Uh, that is a Gen 4, maybe a Gen 3, I don't remember immediately. Uh, LS3 Corvette engine, 430 horsepower that has been professionally installed by uh, what's apparently considered the preeminent repowerer of modern Jeeps. Uh, that's uh, Bruiser Customs, uh, Bruiser Conversions out of Clearwater, Florida. Uh, and uh, it is a way to make me love Jeeps. I mean, this is incredible, seeing this thing under the hood. Uh, Jeeps come this generation with a 3.8 liter anemic V6, barely putting out 200 horsepower. Uh, it's, you know, it's fine. It does what it's supposed to do, uh, but it doesn't do with the way an LS3 does it, which is to me one of the greatest engines on earth. Uh, also being the Corvette model, that means it's an aluminum LS3, which means it's light, uh, probably weighs the same as that V6, doesn't upset the balance of the vehicle at all. And uh, Bruiser being, uh, the kit is like 25 grand on this thing. I looked it up last night. <clears throat> so it's a great conversion, but man, they make you pay for it. Uh, but uh, because of that, it uses the Jeep transmission, the Jeep computer. Uh, this is apparently the difference between Bruiser and a lot of the other guys out there, is it's so seamlessly installed uh, that it might as well have just come with this engine. You know, one OBD2 port, uh, yeah, all of the original Jeep stuff works and connects and works with the motor, uh, the transmission, everything. And uh, that is a pretty neat setup and obviously an incredibly well-engineered conversion uh, for this vehicle. Vehicle. So, you want build and love a Jeep, there it is. Jab a new Corvette engine in it. Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, that is bad to the bone. When I got in this thing and started it up, uh, other than sitting up high like the ladies like to and turning the key up there, uh, I thought I was in a, you know, a C6 Corvette hearing that big LS come to life. So pretty cool crap. Uh, obviously, you can see the quality of build is tremendous. I don't think this thing's seen a lot of off-road time because it's friggin' perfect. I don't see any scratches anywhere. Uh, the two-door, the four-door, I should say. It's 
This was the Unlimited. This was a sea change for Jeep, uh, and it really brought them into the modern competitive market back in 2007 when this uh, JK came out. This was the first four-door Jeep. Uh, normally, they're short. A two-door Jeep is like shorter than a Honda Fit. It's just a little thing. It's wide, but it's little. So in 07, this came out. They kind of bowed out the body to give you more headroom, legroom, uh, elbow room, that sort of thing, uh, and added two more doors at the back so you could turn it into a family SUV of sorts. And they sell the crap out of these things. Uh, doing that was one of the smartest moves ever, and uh, it came out uh, when Daimler Chrysler was running the company. Chrysler bought Jeep from, uh, I believe it was AMC, uh, back in the 80s, who had bought it from, you know, Willys or whenever they gave it up. It's been owned by like seven different companies. Uh, but essentially, since Chrysler took it over, it's gone with them and uh, is now a part of Fiat Chrysler. Uh, we'll get into the rear of this thing now. Oh, God, MS3, you gotta love it. This is Jeep stuff, little taillights surrounded by brush guards and... Okay, so more crap in the back. Uh, there you can see the original mirrors are still with it in the box. That's the original radio. Uh, we've got a couple American flags, which I wish I had for that Cadillac we did yesterday. Uh, my bag of crap, some more donuts for the guys. That's a long story. They usually don't get two sets of donuts, but uh, yeah, anyway, I'll get into that some other time. And then uh, very 80s style, you've got this bazooka sub hanging off the rear tailgate, which is kind of cool. Uh, obviously a custom rear bumper, probably done by poor Poison spider, death squirrel, or, uh, you know, mighty fighting chicken with thongs on its feet, or, you know, I mean, whatever the hell people like Jeep people do. Uh, it has a receiver hitch and, uh, you know, little lights in there, and of course the, uh, the nice big uh, uh, proper tow. Uh, uh, tow receiver down there. So all very neat stuff. And uh, again, very weird to me without the, th I mean, where the hell is the spare tire in this thing? I guess that's what you use the onboard air for. And uh, anyway, Fox, I have to say the Fox is quite a harmless, nice little animal. I'm surprised they named shocks after that and not, you know, like Death Chihuahua or, uh, you know, Crazed Tiger or something. So uh, anyway, there it is. You see the Bruiser Customs, they put on some mild uh, stuff. You've got their little logo on the side with an angry pit bull. Of course, they wouldn't use a, a Sharpe or a, you know, Shih Tzu or something. It's obviously going to be a pit bull uh, with the uh, conversions and the 6.2 LS3 badge. Uh, but nobody's really going to see that unless they hear it, and then they're going to look for it, and it's badass. Man, is it badass. The sun is starting to kill us. Oh, the hell with it. All right, back seat, and again, this was a big seat change for Wrangler with the rear seat, so you could now fit three Canadians in the back, no issue. And go around to the other side, see if we get out of the sun. The Jeep is acting as shade. Uh, so there you go, you could take your family with you out into the wild and get them stuck in the mud too and make them miserable. Uh, here you see these crazy oh shit handles built in there. You're probably gonna need those under certain circumstances, so it's good they're there. And uh, anyway, everyone's gonna be fairly chipper back there even with the crappy Jeep ride. And the big running boards, mirror. Uh, up front, uh, this model was again a big change for Jeep. Let me get the key out, I have in the wrong pocket. Uh, in terms of creature comforts, it was the first Jeep to have power windows, uh, you know, cruise control. Uh, it's got, you know, a fancy, and well, it, they changed the radio in this, but you know, very modern amenities for a Jeep. And uh, the one that got the Purple Heart wouldn't recognize this thing at all. Uh, nice tight door panels, power locks. Uh, this is the only car produced today where the doors are actually designed to come off. You see those exterior hinges on it. Uh, those things will be removed movable if you want. So you could theoretically in this Jeep fold down the windshield, take the doors off just like in an old one. And uh, you know, you got to hand it to uh, uh, Chrysler for continuing to make them like that. That's not easy in this world. Uh, this has some sort of upgraded soft top where you can have basically a sunroof thing going. Uh, you unclip those guys in the front, flip the top back, and you got a sunroof without removing the soft top. Uh, in the old days, taking a soft top off a Jeep was a serious pain in the ass. All right, let me get up in this thing. This is another reason to bold to leap up in these things. All right, let's start this up. So I'm gonna leave the door open to do this. Listen to this. 
Oh man, you know, again, you want me to love a Jeep, there it is. I love it. Mission accomplished. MS3. Holy God, is that awesome. Let me back out of the sun, get a little bit of AC going, and then we'll keep it up. And I'm going to make this video shorter, I promise. They're always too damn long. In fact, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to open. Now it won't make any difference. I should drive in Peter's grass. He'd like that. And so just let me get into the, uh, let me get into the shade a little bit. Okay, look at that rear view camera. Nice upgrade in this thing. Uh, so here we have this very civilized leather wrapped steering wheel. Uh, very, very nice stuff. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, your gauges as you'd expect. 100 mile an hour speedo, probably as fast as you'd want to go in this thing, if that. Fuel gauge, water temp, basically what you need. You've got two digital displays beneath, giving you your trip auto and your PRNDL, that sort of thing. Uh, you've got a multifunction wheel that gives you Bluetooth. I don't know if it still works. Let's see if they set it up that way. Oh, that's over there. Resume. Actually, it didn't have controls anyway. Look at that. So yeah, it is. It does have steering wheel controls. I have to give it credit for that. Yeah, look at that. As I move the crap on the back, it's working. I'm turning up the volume. So okay, that's a very nice radio install where they took the time to make it work with the factory controls. God bless them for that. Uh, Jeep, again, playing on their name. They come up with all these Easter eggs, they call them. You see the little Jeep grill above the mirror. Uh, there's uh, over in the corner there, there's a Jeep going up an incline. Uh, even in the cup holders, you have a little Jeep grill looking at you, and they hid those things all over the vehicle. Uh, not as bad as they did in that uh, Fiat 500 Jeep thing, but uh, they still got them all over the place. I love these vents. These are actually pretty good. I have no idea why this one has a mirror on it. I really don't. What good is that? I guess you can see yourself. Maybe it gives you a view. Okay, somebody's going to want to explain that to me in the comments, why you need a mirror on your vents. And I'm sure it should be obvious, but don't forget, I'm a little bit boneheaded and I'm full of whiskey this morning. Uh, again, you've got the nice wheel, tilt steering, uh, your headlights over there cruise control, all very civilized, uh, self-dimming mirror, uh, this upgraded in-dash Pioneer setup with satellite radio and uh, navigation and Bluetooth and all that. There's your power window controls, again, the first Jeep to have them. Uh, traction off, uh, what is that, hill descent of some kind. You got a little net here with your USB for the phone, for the radio. I think it has CarPlay, transfer case controls, uh, your shifter, you know, all very nice stuff. Uh, in case the goats came out, I did have a uh, Smith & Wesson model 686 with seven rounds ready. Uh, that's finished in a very polished stainless and uh, they'll be very unhappy. I know there's a lot of guys who say, give me 20 rounds and a clock and that's all fine. But if you can't handle a threat with seven, you know, 357 rounds, you have no business holding a gun. Uh, anyway, you've got uh, this uh, soft top up here with, uh, you know, Jeep pull handles and more of these wild boar. Of course it's a wild boar. It wouldn't be like a domesticated pig pull handle. Uh, that really just doesn't scare anyone. This, this thing is set up to terrify me with all these animal names, vicious, horrible animals. But uh, anyway, you've got wild boar pull handles to steady yourself as the idiot driving the Jeep starts rolling it down a hill end over end. And uh, hopefully that'll keep you safe. Uh, what else you got? You have a little place here to put stuff. I don't know. There, There's a nice deep container with the USB outlet. That's a good spot for a gun or two. Maybe a hand grenade or uh, I don't know what Jeep people need. Spandex bandanas. Uh, anyway, everything's all in there. Let's go for a spin. God, that menacing growl from the LS motor. Of course, we're going to be sitting in the driveway for five minutes waiting for the uh, the gates to close behind so the damn goats don't escape. Cannot believe they did that to me. Um, okay, so why don't I like Jeeps? They're probably the reasons that other people do. I mean, they're solid axle. They're, you know, obviously they've tuned the suspension over the years, but they're limited by having a solid front axle, solid rear axle. You're only going to get a ride that's, you know, pretty good at best and uh, really not. They're never good highway cars. I mean, this thing isn't really made for that, even though people use it for it. Uh, it's just not made for highway travel. Um, it is a off 
off-road vehicle. That's what it's for. It's for driving off-road. And honestly, if you had to put the number on it, what, 12, maybe 15% of people will use these things off-road? So uh, there's a lot of Jeep posers out there. And there's not a damn thing wrong with it. There's a lot of Honda posers and Corvette posers and that sort of thing. Uh, but Jeeps just seem more present than that. And they have such a hollowed and sacred history. Uh, it must really piss off the hardcore Jeep guys uh, to see the um, the ones who kind of fluff it around a you know shopping mall parking lot. But uh, anyway, it is what it is. God, this gate is interminable. So it's not a great highway cruiser. The steering is as good as a modern car company can make it while still being a victim of uh, you know its natural problems inherent with the solid front axle. Uh, when you add giant wheels and tires, obviously that's going to make the ride even more troubling. Uh, you know, a factory uh, JK with the, uh, the not the Rubicon without the detaching uh, sway bars and all that stuff, that's going to have a better ride especially with the highway tires on it. Uh, but the minute you start screwing with the stuff and putting, you know, angry grizzly bear shocks on it and vicious cheetah uh, bushings and all that you're gonna start um, you're gonna start screwing with the ride so uh, it really is just a fun around town kind of thing all right the gate is closing nicely I don't see any savage goats barreling through and I think we're good to go It's quite a large dog for a woman to own. I don't know why women, some of them, die. they want to have giant Jeeps and giant angry dogs. Oh, she's very nice though. Uh, and uh, you know, what the hell? I mean, if the thing snaps, right? It just goes, you know, because dogs can do that. I saw Cujo. Uh, the thing just goes batshit. She is not going to be able to control that. Neither am I, by the way. So that's why A, I'm going to have a gun in my pocket and B, I'm going to have a small dog. We have wiener dogs. They're great dogs. They're very nice but they're short and if one snaps and starts coming at you I'm pretty sure I can handle it so uh, you know I don't know I see these 110 pound women walking you know overgrown Great Danes and pit bulls and I think you're just setting yourself up for problems you know what do these pit bulls eat like Alpo with you know neighbors toddler flavor <sighs> anyway you know, I've gotten a request that I should do some sort of a vlog, which um, I, I think I know what that is. Uh, I'd be tempted to, honestly, I think about it. There's another one. Another one. I don't know if there's a man or a woman. Sorry. No, another nice small woman with a giant, vicious hound. Uh, but um, I don't know. I don't know what would come out. And uh, frankly, I'd probably get banned in no time if I let out <laughs> all this stuff that's floating around in there. Just not a great idea. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I could do it under a pseudonym. Uh, you see, not bad road noise for having these big wheels and tires. Uh, I have to say, could be a lot worse. They're obviously quite new and fresh. Let's get pointed in a straight line and just hit it. <laughs> God, that is fantastic. And that is what's missing from most Jeeps. You know, that one doesn't have it. This one does. 430 horsepower, enough torque to tear down an oak tree, and, uh, you know, big V8 under the hood uh, that used to propel a quad. This was a crate engine that was new, so it never propelled anything other than this. But, uh, you know, this is designed to make a Corvette set, you know, track record. So, what a terrific engine under the hood. And I have to say, the Bruiser conversion really is fantastic. You could just, it feels like it came from the factory this way. And uh, that's what they're famous for with all their parts and equipment. They don't mind charging for it. 25 friggin' grand. Damn. But uh, you do get what you pay for, and that's pretty rare in today's age. It's the kick down. <laughs> all right, so there it is. Bruiser Conversions has found a way to make me love Jeeps. Anyway, look, I really appreciate you guys having a look today. This one was kind of fun. Hopefully we get something fun for next week and uh, we'll keep the ball rolling. Uh, eventually we'll get the name changed on the Europa channel and I'll keep doing stuff on the Auto House channel, Marianne permitting, and uh, the world will continue as it should. 
Uh, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Uh, if you're interested in this Jeep, by the way, and you should be, if you want one, this is the one to have. For God's sake, is this the one to have? Uh, call uh, uh, call down at the shop, Out of House of Naples, 239-263-8500 on the web at autohousenaples.com. Thank you so much for having a look. We appreciate it. We'll see you with the next one. Take care.